Here we are for part two of inverse function theorem. We're focusing right now on just solving f of x equals y, given y and given some function from rn to rm. And I want to lead you through real quickly the three things that come to mind for me, very popular ways of solving these guys, and two of which we'll explore as key tools in the proof of the inverse function theorem. So I think the most intuitive one, it's not the one we're going to use in the first version of the proof, is steepest descent. Okay, So we guess, here's a very rough version of steepest descent. There's so much more you can say about it. We guess some x naught to try to solve f of x equals y is not going to work. It's a guess, right? unless we're really lucky. Okay, so But instead of just asking the yes or no question, does this work? What we're going to do, I shouldn't have, shouldn't have erased my picture. Let's have our little schematic here. So we've got x naught, and we're supposed to hit y. And let's say it actually goes over here. f of x naught is over here. What we do is we measure how far we are from where we want to be. That's going to be a badness uh, number. So we're going to create the badness. We're not going to use the distance. We're going to use the distance squared. Okay, Let's call it h sub y of x. We're going to use the magnitude squared of the difference between these guys. Okay, And in general, what we can do is for any x, we just think of this as a function. It's now a real valued function on rn over here. That's not a very good r. And we're th I would like this to be zero. I'd like to find some point where that function is zero. Okay, so that's going to be if I bring that down and make it maybe make a 3D view. There's going to be some sort of function. I'm going to do the graph here. If I look at z, x, and y. So here's the graph of this function. It's going to be something that is always non-negative, and I'd love it if there was some special x such that that were 0, because this is 0 exactly when f of x is actually equal to the desired y. Okay, So it's a very common thing. Instead of asking yes or no, have I solved the problem, say, how close am I to solving the problem? And sometimes you just you just don't actually try to solve the problem. You just minimize this guy, and you don't you don't get 0, and that's life. Um, that's least squares. Okay. Um, so how would we do that? What we would do is you know, our guess was something like this x0 was something that didn't hit y, almost certainly. So what, what you can do is suppose x0 is over here, and I've got some value that's not 0. I could try to go downhill. And that's hopefully going to get me closer to the minimum. Hopefully there is a global minimum of 0 here. And I'm trying to go, go towards it. Another way to look at it is look at the contour plot of hy. Remember, this is all based on a certain y that I want to hit, because that goes into the definition of hy. Uh, so here's maybe 0 secretly. The 0 contour is here. And then 1, 2, 3. Hopefully, if I'm over here with my guess x0, if I go downhill, if I go opposite the direction of the gradient, I'll hopefully be led to that solution. Now, practically speaking, that might be a problem, because maybe there's another minimum over here, but that minimum isn't 0. And maybe if I'm here, I'm actually going to go downhill towards that guy. And I'm not going to get exactly what I want. That's where it gets interesting as for this as a practical method of solution. but. We can at least look at, if we do follow the gradient, what is the gradient of this guy? Well, we want to go opposite the gradient, minus the gradient of hy. OK. Um, and the claim is, so here's an exercise. And at some point, I will record solutions to these exercises. I claim it is minus, um, well, when we think about the matrix of derivatives, the gradient is just the matrix of derivatives, but then thought of as a vector, in other words, transposed. And the claim is it comes out of the matrix of derivatives of f. It's minus 2 
times the derivative of f at x. Okay, that's a row vector, or that's that's a that's right, that's a um, an n by m. Let's see, how am I using it? No, it's an m by n matrix. I transpose it to get an n by m matrix, and then I multiply it by the vector y minus f of x. Okay, this guy is a um, an m by one. Okay, so if I transpose this, this is n by m, and then these do match. Okay, so there's an explicit formula for this is the main thing, and we're going to use this later when we bring this back into the proof of the inverse function theorem. The main thing I want to want to highlight though is that there is a um, a very pretty way of at least getting ourselves into this story of trying to solve this function, trying to solve this equation, and then looking at this badness and then trying to move towards the minimum. What we're going to extract out of this is really just a theoretical issue of how do you know you're at the minimum or not. And this equation is going to be very, very useful for that. And in the next part, I'm going to show you the second method, which is fixed point iteration.